Thank you, Mr. Gerlach, and welcome, Mr. Murphy. You're recognized for five minutes. Uh, good morning, and uh, Mr. Chairman, Ranking Member Levin, members of the committee. Uh, Congressman Gerlach, thank you for that kind introduction and for your friendship and partnership in the work we do in the community. In my role at Berks County Community Foundation, I've worked every day for the last 19 years with local donors who are interested in designing and implementing charitable gifts that do the most good for our community with the resources they have. I have to say that doing that work on the ground, I've become concerned that the conversation here within the Beltway about the charitable deduction has become remarkably unglued from the reality of the community that Congressman Gerlach and I work in. The discussion reached a high point, or perhaps a low point, when the Washington Post recently editorialized that the charitable deduction overwhelmingly benefits the wealthy. Ladies and gentlemen of the committee, I submit to you that the charitable deduction and its encouragement of charitable giving is hardly a loophole or a benefit for the rich, and in fact forms the final safety net in our nation. I'd like to share with you what the charitable deduction means in our community. This is a backpack. It's one of about 400 backpacks that are sent home every Friday with elementary school children in Berks County by the Greater Reading Food Bank. And it's filled with as much food as we can get an elementary school student to carry home. And for most of the students who take it home, it's the only food they'll have for the whole weekend. We even had to get backpacks with wheels on them because some of the children were too small to carry this. I think we should all take a moment sometime today to imagine what it's like to be a six-year-old child and for that backpack and this food to be the only thing that stands between you and hunger for the weekend. Before we sent these backpacks home, many of these children showed up sick on Monday mornings, having not eaten. What's important for the members of the committee to understand in, about these backpacks is that there are no federal, state, or local government dollars invested in this program. These backpacks are funded entirely through charitable contributions from our community. And yes, some of the people who made those contributions deduct that contribution from their income tax. But we cannot allow ourselves to lose sight of the fact that the person who benefits from those charitable gifts isn't the donors, it's those hungry children. Seventy-five years ago, President Roosevelt established the March of Dimes to raise money from Americans to fight polio. Millions of donors have given to that cause, and today the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation projects there will be no cases of polio in the world by the close of this decade, and there hasn't been a case of polio in the United States since 1979. You see, it's the people who don't get polio who are the beneficiaries of the charitable deduction. In my hometown of Reading, we consider ourselves fortunate that Terry McGlynn, who founded the Colonial Oaks Foundation, and his family were able to donate the money to build a cancer center at our local hospital. Mr. Chairman, I have 17-year-old twin boys. Uh, they're great young men, and I'm very proud of them. But any of you know who 17-year-old boys know that some days you think they forgot to turn their brains on in the morning? But Carver and McQuillan, on their spaciest days, know that they are the beneficiaries of the McGlynn's generosity in establishing the Cancer Center because their mother, my wife, is still alive seven years after having been diagnosed with cancer and treated at the McGlynn Regional Cancer Center. Cancer survivors and their families are the beneficiaries of the charitable deduction. Feeding hungry children, eradicating disease, building cancer centers, these aren't loopholes for the rich. These are solutions for our community. The charitable deduction stands alone among provisions in the tax code in encouraging behavior that benefits society, not the taxpayer. It's a simple statement of economic truth that any charitable contribution one of my donors makes leaves them with less money than they had before they made the gift. Now, the value of the tax deduction may be an interesting debate for tax economists here in the Beltway. President Reagan once said, an economist is someone who sees something that works in practice and wonders if it will work in theory. I assure you that the charitable deduction works in practice for our communities. Let's do nothing that threatens the ability of the food bank to send this backpack home. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.
Mr. Levin. Thank you, Mr. Murphy. We'll now hear.